Hello, my name is Alana White. I'm a resident physician in the Department of Surgery at the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Campus. And we'll be talking today about inflammatory breast cancer using a case presentation. Our history of present illness, a 48-year-old premenopausal female presents to your office with the chief complaint of breast swelling. She said it started about one month ago with associated skin changes, which she describes as sort of a leathery, thickening feel to it with some mild pinkness, which has since started spreading. She has not had any fevers, chills, or pain. She went to her PCP and got prescribed one week of antibiotics, but it showed it did not improve her symptoms, and in fact, they look a little bit worse. Her last screening mammography was normal 10 months ago, and she's had routine yearly mammographies that have all been negative since the age of 40. Her past history is pretty non-contributory. She has obesity, hyperlipidemia, a knee replacement, and as far as she knows, no family history of breast or other cancers. This is a representative image of her exam. Peau de orange in French translates to orange peel, which describes the thick and pitted skin you can subtly appreciate here. You can also note that the nipple is flattened compared to the other side and there is some mild erythema. Of note, she has no palpable breast mass, but she does have palpable clavicular nodes. Our differential at this point could include mastitis, although she is not breastfeeding, cellulitis, ductal ectasia, or high on our differential given this classic presentation and failure to improve on antibiotics is inflammatory breast cancer. She then undergoes diagnostic mammogram, which shows global skin and trabecular thickening on the right breast with right axillary adenopathy and a normal left breast on mammography. She undergoes breast ultrasound, which identifies um, a dominant mass, skin thickening, and subcutaneous edema, and core needle biopsy reveals invasive ductal carcinoma. She undergoes ultrasound of her regional lymph nodes, including axillary and clavicular, and she has a supraclavicular node that's positive for metastatic carcinoma on ultrasound guided by. Because of the rapid onset of symptoms, inflammatory breast can cancer will often be seen less than a year after a negative screening mammogram, as in this patient. They'll often respond report swelling or redness developing over a period of weeks or sometimes months. This can be accompanied by a heaviness, burning or tenderness, and nipple changes such as inversion or retraction. This is due to the extensive tumor involvement of the breast and dermal lymphatics. Inflammatory breast cancer is a clinical diagnosis it has to be rapid onset occurring in less than six months of these noted breast changes, it has to involve greater than a third of the breast and in the setting of a biopsy consistent with invasive carcinoma. It's an uncommon cancer representing only one to 3% of breast cancers in the US. There's no unique histologic subtype, molecular markers or genetic signature and it is an aggressive disease. It's T4 by definition, often regional nodes are involved in higher rates of distant metastasis at presentation, about 20 to 35%. Here I'll summarize the imaging most patients will undergo for their workup, which is a diagnostic mammogram, usually accompanied by a breast ultrasound in order to obtain a biopsy, and axillary and regional ultrasound. Of note, a skin biopsy is not required for the diagnosis. 
Although the dermal lymphatic invasion is a hallmark of the disease, it is noted in less than 75% of skin biopsies in patients with inflammatory breast cancer and, there, and does not rule it out. For staging, because this tumor is so aggressive, all patients should undergo staging, which would include a CT chest, abdomen, pelvis, a bone or PET scan, and selective brain imaging, which is symptom-based, not part of the standard workup. The National Comprehensive Cancer Center guidelines has a very nice summary of the management. Here on our slide, you can see a summary of the workup, uh, which includes a history and physical, a review of the pathology, fertility and genetic counseling, the imaging which we have gone over. All of these patients then get upfront preoperative systemic therapy with an anthracycline and taxane, and if uh, HER2 positive, HER2 targeted therapy. If they're a responder, they become a candidate for surgery, which is a total mastectomy and level one and two axillary dissection plus radiation to the chest wall infraclavicular region, supraclavicular region, internal mammary nodes, and potentially a candidate for delayed breast reconstruction. Afterwards, they complete any chemotherapy not done preoperatively, along with ER or PR targeted therapy, and one year of HER2 targeted therapy. If they are not a responder to preoperative systemic therapy, you can consider additional systemic therapy, clinical trials, um, and preoperative radiation in order to try to get them into the responder arm. Um, unfortunately, if they are not a responder, this goes to individualized treatment, which is discussed with a multidisciplinary tumor board and often um, becomes palliative treatment. It's important to note that inflammatory breast cancer is considered primarily a non-operable cancer in the absence of any systemic or adjunctive therapy. If they make it to uh, becoming a surgical candidate, the treatment is modified radical mastectomy with a level one and two axillary dissection. Early attempts at lumpectomy showed high rates of local recurrence, um, precluding breast conservation in these patients. Additionally, sentinel lymph node biopsy and targeted axillary dissection is contraindicated because of the nature of this uh, diffuse dermal and lymphatic invasion of the tumor. The um, sentinel lymph node is not, uh, mapping is not accurate and cannot be used. Breast, reconstru <clears throat> breast reconstruction is delayed in these cases uh, due to the importance of radiation treatment, the high risk of recurrence, and uh, the limitation of not being able to use skin sparing mastectomy because of the dermal involvement. In summary, the hallmark is dermal lymphatic invasion, which causes the peau de orange appearance. It's a clinical pathologic diagnosis that does not require a breast biopsy. This is an aggressive clinical entity and considered T4 disease at baseline. The mainstay is systemic therapy and surgical options are much more limited in these cases. Here is a summary of my references. Hopefully this is a good board or ab site review and these references are great for reviewing this topic. I want to thank Dr. Murphy, my mentor for this project, along with Dr. Arendt, Dr. Christian, and Dr. Tevis for their feedback and giving me the opportunity to share my presentation with you here. Thank you.